This block is called Burgoyne Surrounded. So a little history here. Who is Burgoyne and why was he surrounded? John Burgoyne was a British general in the American Revolutionary War. And in the Battle of Saratoga, evidently he was surrounded by American troops and he surrendered. So uh, this is obviously an American quilt block celebrating his surrender. So that's the history behind why this is called Burgoyne Surrounded. This has always been on my bucket list for many years and I've never really sat down to work on it. So here we go. All of these blocks are made from Kaif faucet fabrics. These blocks finish at 17 inches and there are 12 of them in the quilt. It has sashing and cornerstones. And I'll look later at the instructions and we can go over all the details. There's one fabric that is the same throughout the quilt. And where it appears is here on the edges in these four places and in the very center of the block. And I did this because it just made cutting and writing instructions easier. Of course, you can put anything here you want. And I broke it down into units. So this is a unit. It's a three patch unit. This is another three patch unit. This is called the center nine patch unit. These are nine patch units. There are four of them in each block. And these are four patch units and there are four in each block. So you can see that here's the block. Here is a sashing and cornerstone, sashing cornerstone. And then it makes this design like this. The instructions are five pages, and I'm just going to go over all five pages and then piece them as we come to the units. In this pattern, I used 13 fat quarters for the block accent fabrics and one single fabric for the background. You might find it easier if you organize things by getting seven one gallon size plastic zipper bags or small containers because as we cut the fabric, we're going to put it in a separate bag for each unit. Here is the, the block for you to refer to. And this reminds you that it's 17 inches finished and we're going to make 12 of these. And here is the full quilt. Now this has the same block in each thing and it's, it's easier for you because everything is color coordinated to this. This will finish approximately 63 by 83. The fabric you need are 13 fat quarters. One you're going to pull out to use as that one fabric I was telling you about that's in all the blocks. And the other 12 will be used for the rest of the blocks. You'll need about five and a quarter yards of background and three quarter yards for the binding. At first I was going to use the background fabric for the binding, but I think it'll look better just having a little pop of color around the edge. So that's what I'm going to do. Here are the units we're going to piece. And I'm going to tell you about the units and then show you where they are. This is the light three patch unit. And I call it light because the background fabrics are on the sides and it's a three patch. There's a rectangle, a square, and another rectangle. And this is the one that uses the same fabric through the whole quilt. This light three patch unit is up here. So here is the light fabrics on either side and the, the one fabric used throughout the quilt is in the center. This light three patch unit is on all four sides of the block and it's also right here in the center. When we make this unit, we're going to make 60 of them, and there are five in each block. The next unit is this three-patch unit, and we call it the dark three-patch unit, because the dark fabric, or the accent fabric, is on the outside edges. There are four of these in each block. And what I have done is each block has the same fabric for all four of these dark three-patch units. The next one is the nine patch unit, and that are these four 
in the corners here, the inner corners. The four patch unit and these four on the outer corners. And then the cornerstones are just another nine patch unit and I don't have that here yet, but we will be getting to that. What we're going to do first is we're going to pull out the fat quarter to use for the light three patch unit, the unit that's used throughout the quilt. And we're going to cut that up and we're going to cut enough background fabric to complete that unit because it's easier since this goes through the whole quilt to just get those out of the way first. So what we're going to do for this one is we're going to choose our one fat quarter and we're going to cut five pieces at one and a half times 21 inches. So the fabric, the fat quarter is 21 inches, so just cut five strips off at one and a half inches times 21 inches. From the background fabric, we're going to cut five at three and a half inches times the width of fabric. Then we're going to take that width of fabric and cut it in half so we have 10 pieces at three and a half times 21 inches. So now we have our background fabric is 21 inches and our accent fabric is 21 inches long. And we're going to make five of these strip sets where the background fabric is on the outside and the accent fabric is in the middle. Here is, I've already done these so I'm, I won't be demoing them, but here is the leftovers, what I had left over from one of these when I pieced this. So you have your two background pieces of fabric and your accent fabric here. And then we're, we take this and we're going to cut these up into one and a half inch segments. And this is what the one and a half inch segments look like. So you might notice that up here and on all four sides and here in the center. It's that patch. Once you've cut your 60 pieces, you're going to take 12 of the pieces and put them in the center nine patch bag. You're going to have a bag for each of these units. And then the other 48 pieces you're going to leave in the light three patch bag. And this is all in the instructions so you don't have to keep up with it now. If you can download the instructions and follow along with them, it'll make more sense to you. Once we finish the light three patch, we're going to cut up the rest of the fabric. And on page two, I have the cutting instructions and diagrams for the fat quarters. The additional are the remaining 12 fat quarters. And here's what we're going to do. This lists all the cuts you're going to make. And over here we have, I've lettered each segment and where they go in the quilt. So this you're cutting for section D and then it tells you to put those in the dark three patch bag. So for example you're going to cut two at three and a half times seven inches and put that in the dark three patch bag and then all the rest of these are cut from the fat quarters. Now below this is the diagram of the fat quarter. Here's the 21 inches Here's the selvage and the 18 inches. If you take this end opposite the selvage and you even it up and then you cut off 14 inches. So now you have 14 inches times 21 inches. This is left for your scrap bin and you're going to take this 14 by 21 piece of fabric and turn it this way. And then you will start cutting your, your strips from there. Your first strip will be three and a half inches times 14 inches and you'll cut that in half. So you'll have your two at three and a half times seven inches. And you'll see this is, has the letter D and that corresponds to this cut right here. And so that tells you how much you need to cut. This tells you where it is on the fat quarter and then this tells you which bag to put it in. If we go back to the units, we are cutting that for the dark three patch unit, which is this one right here. And you see this is labeled D, C, and D. So the two D's are the accent fabrics, and that is this D right here. 
So you know that you're cutting for the dark three patch unit and you're cutting for section D. And then each one of those is the same way. The next one you'll cut section E for the center nine patch unit, which is four squares. So here is the center nine patch unit and here are the four squares marked E. Okay, so between this and this, you should be able to cut all your 12 remaining fat quarters and have all the pieces that you need in the bags. And then we have the dark three patch, center nine patch, the nine patch, four patch, and the sash and cornerstones. Those are your bags. After you cut your fat quarters, you're ready to cut your background fabric. You're halfway there. And this is done the same way as the fat quarters, only I don't have a diagram. This one tells you, the very first one says cut two at one and a half inches times the width of fabric. And you're going to subcut to 12 at one and a half times seven inches. And this is for uh, section C. And you're going to put it in the dark three patch bag. So if we look at section C, the dark three patch, you know, this is what goes there. And you just continue down the same way and cut each part and put it in the bag that it belongs to. In this one, we're cutting a strip and it's going to go to two different bags. You're going to cut 12 at one and a half times the width of fabric. And for each strip, each of the 12 strips, you're going to cut one at 13 inches and two at seven inches. And those pieces, those three pieces will go in the nine patch bag. And what that is, so it's J and I in the nine patch. Here's the nine patch, here's J, and here's I. So those are the pieces you'll be cutting from the background for that patch. And then you'll also cut one at 13 inches for the four patch bag. And that is letter K. So here is the four patch and here is the K. So you can, as you cut these, you can see what you're actually cutting for. And follow this all the way down till you get to the bottom. And the only thing different here is this section here. You're going to cut six at three and a half times the width of fabric and subcut it to 96 pieces at two and a half inch segments. And so this is for letter N. And this is in the block itself. And so these, you put 48 pieces in the nine patch bag and 48 pieces in the four patch bag. So this is letter N, like Nancy. And that is these little pieces here. These two small here in all four corners, there are two pieces. So continue like this and cut all of your background pieces and put them in the proper bags. This is your binding. You're going to cut eight pieces at two and a half times the width of fabric. We're going to start off with the center nine patch unit. And in your bag for the center nine patch, you should have 48 of these squares, 24 of these F pieces, and 12 of the light three patch unit. Now I'm going to pull out one set and you should probably work on one set at a time. You can use the same four fabrics for each nine patch, center nine patch unit, or you can mix up the colors if you like. But I'm going to go through the whole quilt with using one color for each unit. And you know, these are stripes, I can put them going either way, however I want. So I'm going to do them this way. So you'll have your four squares, and you'll have your light three patch unit, and your two pieces of background fabric. And you will piece each of the sets like this. Here is your center nine patch, and go through the entire bag for your center nine patch blocks and you should have 12 of these when you're finished. 
and then put them back in the bag for now. Next we'll go on to the dark three patch unit. And in the bag you will have a set like this for each of your fabrics, each of your 12 fabrics. And then you'll have a, a strip that goes in the middle and you'll also have all of these pieces that are three and a half by seven and a half inches. So we're going to put these to the side right now. And if you look at your instructions, we're going to take these two pieces, here we have D, C, and D, and sew your strip set just like this. Then we're going to cut this strip set into four pieces at one and a half inches. Now I've pressed them I've sewn them and pressed the seams open and cut them into one and a half inch segments and there's just a little scrap left. After you finish all of these, we're going to sew this unit to the light three patch unit. So you can at this point go into that three patch unit bag or you can wait and do all of your pieces at once. Here I'm going to show you how to do four of them and we're going to sew these together like this. And then after we sew those together, we're going to sew this large piece onto it. And be careful you watch the placement because this piece, the, the light three patch unit needs to be on the outside. And the dark three patch unit is next and then your large background piece. And I'm going to do this for all four of these pieces. After you have pieced and pressed all 48 of these units, put them back in the dark three patch bag for now. And we're going to go on to the nine patch bag. So pull out your nine patch bag and open up, take out one set of fabrics. You should have these pieces in that bag for each of the colors, different fabrics. So you'll have 12 sets like this and you're going to piece them like this. Here we have our two sets, our two strip sets, pieced and pressed, and now I'm going to cut them into one and a half inch segments. The smaller set, I'm going to cut into four at one and a half inches, and the larger one, I'm going to cut at eight at one and a half inch segments. These pieces over here are, are the cut segments, and you're going to put them together like this into four nine patches. And here's what a nine patch is. And you press the seams open. After you do all your nine patches, in that same bag, you have a set of these two and a half by three and a half inch pieces of background. And you're going to sew one of these pieces onto each of these four nine patch units and then press the seams open as well. Once you have all of these nine patch units pieced and the background fabric attached, put everything back in the same bag as the nine patch unit. And then we're going to go on to the four patch unit. In the four patch unit bag, you have two strips, or you have one strip for each of the fabrics. So you'll have 12 different accent strips and you'll have 12 strips of the background fabric. This one is longer because I was too lazy to cut it off. So, and you'll also have a collection of these two and a half inch by three and a half inch pieces of background fabric. We're going to sew this strip set together and we're going to cut it into one and a half inch segments, eight of them, and then make the four patches. Here are the pieces I cut. This is half of them. And you take these and you flip them like this to make your four patch. Then you sew those together and press them. Then you take your pieces, the, your background pieces that you have in the bag, you sew them to the two and a half inch side of all of the four patches. This is the three and a half inch side and this is the two and a half inch. And it doesn't matter where you put it on the four patch because I'll show you why later when we put the block together. So do this for all of the four patches in your four patch bag and then put those back in the bag for now. All right now we are ready to sew a block. 
What you're going to do is go into your center nine patch bag and you're going to pull out a center nine patch. Go into your dark three patch bag and pull out a set of these units and you can mix and match. I'm going to match but you can mix and match if you want. Now then go to your nine patch and pull out a set of four of these units and then your four patch bag and pull out a set of four four patches. And here's how you're going to put the block together. Start with your center nine patch and then put these units all around and be sure that your uh, three patch blocks are facing outward. Now the, pat the nine patches and the four patches are going in the corner. And if you look here, if I put this four patch here, I want this, these blocks to all be connected in this direction. If I put the, four, the, the nine patch like this, I can also put it like this and the corners still meet and go outward. Now I also need to add a four patch and this one worked out fine. It's all the, the corners are matching and going out in a diagonal line. So let's put one over here and see what happens. So if I add this, these don't go out in a diagonal line. The four patch is misaligned. But what you can do is turn this nine patch like this and turn the four patch like that. And then you have your diagonal going in the right direction. So the nine patch block can be put either vertical or horizontal and it doesn't matter. And you can change it to match whatever the four patch needs. So let's do another one. Let's put this down here and let's move this up some so you can see. And if I put my nine patch like that, you see it doesn't match. So this needs to be turned and then the four patch will match now. So you have all of your corners meeting like this and going out. And finally this one, let's put the nine patch like this. And the four patch, okay, it needs to be moved. So let's rotate this this way and put this one that way. And here you have all of your diagonals going in the right direction. I can't tell you how many times I ripped these little units out because I thought I had them right and I didn't. And I was trying to make sure I put these on the right place and then it dawned on me that they don't need to be in the right place because you can rotate the blocks to put them how you need them. Now you're just going to go ahead and piece these together in rows. You'll piece the nine patches and the four patches together and then piece your rows across and you're done with the block. And I just noticed that this is wrong. Look at this. Okay. So don't do that. You know, make sure these are press are facing outward. All of these little the light three patches are facing outward. Okay, I'm glad I caught that. So I'm going to piece this and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, here is the block finished and it barely fits on the camera lens. Uh, when I finish my blocks, I starch the heck out of them. I just load them down with starch and press it. And it, it just makes it easier to put them together in a quilt. Now that the blocks are finished, in your sashing and cornerstones bag, you should have all of your sashing and all the fabric for your cornerstone. I went ahead and laid out my quilt blocks, laid out my blocks in three across and four down. Then I sewed my sashings between the blocks. Here is one row, you can, can't see the whole thing, but here's a sashing and then there's a sashing between these two blocks and all the way down here's another one and then the last the outer sashing here and I did this for all the four rows and now I'm ready to make the cornerstone blocks that will go up here and here and and then put them together with the other sashing 
pull out all of your fabrics and your cornerstones and we'll start working on those. In your sashing cornerstone bag, you'll have piece you'll have three pieces of fabric, accent fabric from each of the fabrics. And these will these two together will make two nine patches. Now you'll have 12 sets of these, one for each fabric, and that's enough to make 24 of these blocks. You're only going to use 20, but I went ahead and just pieced all of them because then now they just have four, they will be three inch finished, nine patches. So they're perfect for orphan quilts or in the scrap bin. Sew these together just as you did the other nine patches. The, cut the large one into eight and the small one into two. Then go ahead and piece your two nine patch blocks from each group. When you're ready to sew the rows together, you will put cornerstones in between your sash pieces. These will go between the rows and go on top of the quilt and the bottom of the quilt. So there are four cornerstones in each one and three sashings in each one for the rows. And here's what it looks like sewn onto the top of the quilt. So you see the design goes out to the corners and goes out to the, the sash, the cornerstones. And this is what the top part looks like. And then I will take and sew this to the bottom. and it will look like this. When I sew the sashing row to the blocks, I put the blocks against the feed dogs because these seam lines will help ease in if there needs to be any easing in. So I flip it like this and this goes at the top and the, the bottom part, the blocks go against the feed dogs. All right, that's going to be it for this video. I'm not going to show the completed quilt yet, but I will show it in a future video with the other sew along. So thank you for watching and I hope you make one of these for yourself.